Hello and welcome as we are entering the week of the 14th day of September 2020. My name is Derek. This is the Money Charts channel where, like always, all bets, trades, and of the like, well, that's within each his own risk and their own reward. And uh, within the silver market, we uh, can see that within these lines that are drawn in, that the 28 and a half general area has most certainly been a significant level of resistance. Uh, level of 20 low change was not. And was it a clear, concise level move to next level? Oh, yeah. Did it pierce extra? Whatever it did. And as it's going now, what's it been doing? And you can almost say nothing. Hmm, pretty much. And it's getting two major extremes. When I look at the 18 average, how it's just the 18 average of highs is declining and declining like this with well, the 18 average of lows going from barely rising to starting to flatten out which means that we haven't really been having any sustained rallies or sell-offs lately i'm going to transition this right now to the canadian dollar chart it pretty much looks exact same so within such i can just go to here the difference is 35 30 because there's about a uh eh, close to a 32 33 percent differential as far as the US and Canadian dollar, but we can still see again the same thing here uh, Just hanging in there within um, The 18 average So where do we go from here? Well, I mean a lot of this is Just going to continue on within the uh, wait and see kind of deal amongst the uh, single hour term time frame it has uh, just a bunch of Nothing really as you can see this little rally in here gave it all back But it supported where we came from and has held it with two major hits and then from the last major hit September the 8th It has been making these higher lows at least it made one of them and it matched it twice one around the 35 low change area in the Canadian front, but same thing pretty much for the US doing the same sort of movements it came down and supported where it need to shorter term and then it didn't go down and it hasn't done anything as I mentioned with the 18 average of highs on the daily term just going down It's just not really breaking out. We had a little bit of a rally here, but from what? Like 35 and a dime to like 36 That's like 90 cents or barely over 2% and doing so over a good portion of a day That's uh, very much especially from where we are with our higher volatility it Really hasn't been too much and as it goes now, so short term is just a bam, blam, blam, bunch of nonsense. At least as far as I'm concerned, at least I know it doing nothing is holding and staying above a key area. And a key area is much higher than it's ever been for a long time and hadn't hardly been there at all, which is north of 30, even north of 25, for such a significant period of time. Uh, just to me, a fantastic uh, situation as it is. Now, personal preference... I'm going to hope that we can get a retracement and come back higher as well. I'm in a situation where I'm going to probably want to get, get into some silver as fantasy hockey has just been pretty much a spectacular rise over the, I don't know, six, seven weeks since uh, August the 1st. I've pretty much made close to about a year, year's income just during that time. And I probably will break that yearly income number later in the week, in the next week, the way things are going, practically winning almost every single day. Today was like my fourth or fifth best day uh, during this run as I uh, have an another good four-figure score payout. And I've even had five-figure score daily payouts. In fact, I had my first ever five-figure score payout of my life, something that I realized I never had until now, which uh, is a nice feeling. I'm trying to get my first ever six and seven at some point. But you know what, though? Uh, you just play the game as it is and for anyone in the situation if you're looking to buy for me I mean whatever difference if I buy now and it happens to go down. I mean big, big deal It's just part of the uh, journey versus destination and You know the destination for me when I look at this weekly monthly term time frame the destination is going to be uh, much much higher prices breaking this level of resistance and going so much higher the journey and how it gets there what kind of higher lows and lower lows and matching lows and all those things that happen along the way will just be there i mean weekly charts i see within something like this how do i read this what does this mean 
And a lot of this is what traders don't like from what they say, and that is indecision, because that's what I see as far as where the next short-term movement is concerned. This is very, 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 very overextended with the move up to this point like it has, but within this, it pulls back in here, and then it's done all this. So as mentioned, it's done a very good job of holding and staying. If this thing at any given time, and it could have been last week, week before, this week, and moving into the next one, if this thing just happens to break out you're gonna to have to give this all the credential in the world that this thing could break this high and have a very very big gain and that's obviously on the f situation at some given point we're gonna have a key low high right now we have a key low here a key high and a very good correction of greater than 38.2 then 61.8 percent but when will that high come into play? Because this is a shit-ass correction. Whatever on the language, it's just normal speak, whatever. But this is like a, a low-end, whatever, microscopic correction. It's like nothing. And that's part of the game. And that's just, okay, so if you see that on the shorter term and then you do this, that's why going up, you can beat the size of the candle moves. And then at some point, this thing is just going to be like having a decent size move down. Is it going to be from like 38 in Canadian terms? And I'm going to switch this to American because I want to look at more times frames anyway. But are we, are we using this on the American chart? Are we going to come back down and maybe see this at 18 and 20 and stuff like that? Uh, I don't know. But I realize when this thing breaks out... And the monthly time frame, this has just started to get overextended because excitation was July. After all of this beautiful stuff for like months and years and even a good decade of consolidating the last sell-off, which was a higher low to the uh, really like $4 levels of, and I'm laughing the kind of because it's like what a, a sick cheap price to have for such a quite long significant period of time. Uh, but throwing that part aside, that higher low, was established and there was that good correction so you have a big move a shitty correction as far as what you're looking for and a bunch of them until this one this was a good one from key high into here overall it still wasn't anything large from this low but still a good one and then big big move here very big correction and it was a massive one as far as this low not much higher than this one significantly lower than the high still making the higher low that's greater than 61.8 to 76.4 is what that would be also translate to which is what it was and it's had a lot of time within it. It arrived there in like 2013-ish or so. And it didn't get out of it until just recently. It had an attempt right off the early stages in like 2016 or so to break out. It obviously didn't do it. Again, an attempt. And, and it really it did, but it didn't. Uh, August of last year, or about a year ago, but we had this COVID uh, breakdown lows and it recovered it so fantastic well. And then just this period in here give you indication of how it held the, the rally from the lows into this general area. Oh, big, big move from that point on. So as I see this now, early leaving of the 18 average of highs, another little decent size uh, green candle. And so far this month, we're halfway through, it has just been pausing it. And it can continue to pause it. But to me, it wouldn't be a surprise if this thing can continue to further extend these moves. And if it did, now we're going to be starting to talk about the range area of this resistance as the low end of where the next where the next target area would be, which would be about 36. That would represent the highs in this area. It would also represent this support low from May, June, and July of 2011. And then, of course, to the previous really double hit high of $50. And the double hit, 1980. I got about 52 or so, 53. I've heard that the price actually traded. Not many trades would have been over 50, but there would have been a, quite a few that would have traded at 46, 48, 50, 42, 46 for a significant periods of time when I was looking back at the data, meaning it held some high numbers for several days. It wasn't just one of those one or four hour deals, although it was one of those one or four week deals. And on a break of this resistance, and it could be now, it, it, it could be now because every single time I've talked about charts and all these things, that when you get to a potential area of resistance, that's the key word is potential. So what's the if and the not? Well, the if resistance, well, that means you go to an area and you stop going up, which means you go down or you just go sideways and consolidate or congest at an area. 
that's a level of finding resistance. When you don't find resistance, and the same thing as with support on the downside, the polarity works just as true there. But when you're not finding resistance where, at a key level where you're supposed to. So in this example here, if we don't resist this, the likely event is fantastic moves. Where we look at a play like right here, like 70. I mean, am I supposed to think that this is going to be where the top is going to be for a key move? Just this length higher compared to this length down in here? That's like, no. I mean, at least talk about here conservative, which is like 175, 180. And even 130 is a number that I calculated mathematically and it's something that should pierce above. And that's like short term levels, intermediate terms. Because ultimately... I, I got to think these numbers are going to, I mean, this 10,000 number, I'm not going to say, oh, it's going to hit that, but I'm definitely not going to say it's not, as I expect monstrous possibilities, especially when I go more of a, uh, uh, I don't know what words to use, uh, beyond belief, uh, uh, metaphysical type of thinking. That I can kind of coincide with physics and how the world is today for why the prices should go to what I would believe is extreme levels. Now, one of them, and you can take it for a grain of salt or for what it's worth, but my view on Mr. Cliff High of the Webbot is if there was ever a modern day profit, you could take it for what it's worth, but you still got to. Take it for a grain of, of, of salt because one thing, one of my favorite jokes that I talk to people about Cliff High is how fantastic, how fantastic that Cliff High was at predicting the when, which is something he never gets right, is the whens, but when Donald Trump would win the election. Not only did he predict Donald Trump would win four years ago, but he predicted, predicted when he would win. And a lot of the things that web bots have stated have usually occurred like much, 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 much later, more times than that. And all the silver stuff is already at that tune. But the joke, of course, is like how easy is it to predict the when? Because, I mean, the date's already been scheduled and stuff like that. So it's really just, I mean, he's, he's, as, he's almost as good as he is at predicting events. He's just as bad as predicting when they happen. And all that is is just using stuff from like, it's like, just he's like me on computers when I do my fantasy hockey stuff. I just go through so much mathematical stuff and deal through computers and that run its numbers from stats and stuff that's out there. And stats in the case of that is what people post on different stuff on the internet. And then he does weird stuff on that. And hey, a lot of the stuff that has went in the past, but the big one again would be the ratio of gold to silver going to one to one. And I thought a lot about that. And if silver were to go up here, and there's two, well, 23, seven, I was trying to get this so I can go like this here. So if we go up here, well, that's, a, that's, that's a beyond fantastic move, but it's realistic. That's why this is an extreme aggressive move. I talk about, yeah, I'll go into like 65, 75 on how that's like nothing move. And it, to me it is, it's like a baby ass move. Realistically coming in here for like a short term play, maybe coming back and then in time, they like come in up and then you're up to about here. And then you're going to have to think, oh my goodness, a move to a thousand is extreme. Which I think it would be. But if, if there ever was such an event on the ratio going anywhere near 1 to 1, and that just looks weird, but 1 to 1 ratio, well, gold's going to be going well north of 2,000 here as we're talking. And, and then as silver would make its move to 50, 100, 200, 400, gold's going to be making its move to 3,000, 4,000, 5,000 and such. So where would they meet up at? Would 4,000 even make sense? You have to think that that's a conservative level if it does meet up at that point. And of course, would that be, most likely that'd be a blow off top area. And now does that make any fun, uh, tangible sense within the laws of physics that that could happen? Historically and all that, and you're gonna get the same numbers from pretty much everybody. And that is about close to 16, we'll say 15 just for even easy math, 15 to 1-ish ratio. If you're talking about the 16 to 1, you maybe go 14 or 12 and 18, you know, the teenage numbers. Uh, but now if you're talking about a move, you can say, now let's talk about this 10 number, which is still 10 times higher than 1. 
Okay, so amongst the 10 number, one, if you're talking about like normal moves, like a 15, 16 to one move, well, if you're just going to go 16 in your bottom 10, that's pretty much a hit of 15 area. So that still counts. And then when you talk about different situations, like how much is mine and different fun things like that, some people talk in the cost, some people might even say it should be a 10 or a 9 to 1 ratio. But I mean, that's going to like the extreme lowest numbers ever, yet I'm saying one. And really, I'm not saying, I'm just reading from what Cliff High has said. I'm not. Uh, but within such, what type of fundamental stuff could crush the 10 number so that the ratio would still go down 10 times lower than that from that point? And I mean, I can only think of one thing on a fundamental level, and that is an extreme shortage like that, like literally the physical demand need for silver, possibly and probably due to inventions requiring such of the metal, which we're in a time where we're having a lot of that stuff going down then that's where there's a, a craze for the melting machines. And I think that, and I've been talking about this before, I think this is going to happen at some point where the price is just going to escalate so damn high and there's uh, within that demand. And then you're going to have all these people that are going to be turning in. They're, it's going to get to the point where, hey, we, we've already got what we can. What kind of bullion people are going to be turning their bullion in over and over and over again. And the supply, the global supply of world bullion will just, shatterly get destroyed on the downside because of the fact that it's going to be melted and i think on an advanced level that as we move decades and decades and decades into the future we're talking i'm talking 40s 50s and beyond that a lot of the silver that uh, we have today and that will be invented in the next many years to come will be that of uh, very expensive compared to what's being made in the future. Meaning, you take like say uh, a, a one ounce eagle, one ounce maple, all of those cool coins, and you got them your normal mint condition coin. And in 2057, I mean, you might be able to trade a maple or an eagle in and get five, 10 ounces of silver, 15 ounces of silver because they become such a numismatic value, even though they're not such today. And then you got a lot of the numismatic stuff. And well, for me, part of my strategy is, and I've thought of this for years, and if the situation were to come up where there is a melting craze, then what am I going to sell? Am I going to sell things like all these beautiful collector coins? Oh, well, how about things like my 10 ounce bars from Sunshine Mint? And this one ounce roll of Sunshine Mint coins. Yeah, those are the ones I'm going to be wanting to get minted or melted. But even then, if you take like a Sunshine Mint coin today, maybe it's worth two or three ounces of silver in a few decades from now. We'll see, but that's just something to keep in mind. So when I buy my silver today, I keep that in mind in that of, okay, if there's which silver when I buy this, is this something that I want to keep for several decades? And when I buy a 10 ounce sunshine mint bar, the answer is probably no. And then when I'm buying maybe this one beautiful kilo of do year of the dog coin, and you know what, maybe, yeah. So anyway, thank you for tuning in. Have yourself a great day. Bye-bye.